The comforter. It means advocate, a one who helps alongside. That word comforter. And that is what the Lord Jesus Christ was promising just before he was to die on the cross and be resurrected and ascend into heaven, that he was going to send a comforter, someone to help alongside. The scripture teaches that he's a person. He's not an agent or an influence, he's God. And we're never to refer to the Holy Spirit as it. Now there's some mistranslations in the authorized version because in those days when this was translated several hundred years ago, they referred to certain uh, things about the Holy Spirit as it because it was a neuter. But he is not something, but he's someone. And holy indicates that he's holy within himself. Holy Spirit. Now the Bible teaches that the Holy Spirit is co-equal with God the Father and God the Son. There is a trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Now the Bible teaches that the Holy Spirit is omnipotent. The word omnipotent means all powerful. In Micah 3, 8 it says, I'm full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. And then the Bible says that the Holy Spirit is present everywhere at the same time. Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence, said the psalmist in 139.7. You can't go anywhere and get away from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is everywhere. And that's the reason when you have a sense of guilt put there by the Holy Spirit many times, that guilt will go with you even if you travel to a faraway island trying to get rid of it. The Holy Spirit convicting you of sin. The Holy Spirit is not confined to a body. The Holy Spirit can be all over the world at the same time. And he said, it's expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Holy Spirit cannot come unto you. Now the Bible also teaches that he has all knowledge. Listen to this in 1 Corinthians 2.10. But God hath revealed unto them, unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things the deep things of God. The Holy Spirit is here tonight searching, searching your brain, searching your heart, searching your mind, searching your soul. In the book of Revelation, he is spoken of as having seven eyes, which is symbolic, indicating that nothing is hidden from his searching glance and perfect knowledge. And this ought to lead all of us to walk daily before God. And then the Bible says he is eternal. In Matthew 9, 14, we have the phrase, the eternal spirit. He is co-eternal with God, the Father and the Son. Like we have ice and water and vapor, three things, but they're all the same. But they take different forms. The Holy Spirit is one of the Trinity, equal with God the Father and God the Son. He is also holy. And the word holy is used concerning the Holy Spirit 100 times in the New Testament. Be ye holy even as I am holy is God's command. But it is the Holy Spirit who alone can impart divine holiness. And the Bible says without holiness no man can see God. What does that mean? That means that before you can get to heaven you have to have the, a righteousness that is equal to that of Jesus Christ. You say, well, Billy, I can never have that. No, you cannot. But when Christ died on the cross, he died to provide you with a robe of righteousness, which the moment you receive Christ, you're clothed in, so that when God looks at you, he no longer sees your heart filled with its envy and its sin and its wickedness, but he sees the blood of Christ. And you are accepted because you're clothed in his righteousness. You are declared righteous. You are declared righteous by the judicial act of God because he accepts the atonement of Christ on the cross for your sins. And that's a wonderful thing to know. The Holy Spirit bears witness to Jesus Christ who is the truth. Now the Bible also teaches where he is, there is liberty. The Holy Spirit liberates. Eric Hoffa, the labor leader, said that the best test of freedom is not in what we are free to do, but in what we are free not to do. Now the Holy Spirit not only convicts, but he gives new life. The Bible says that we're dead in sins. 
Do you realize that you're a walking dead person? You're dead toward God. You're spiritually dead, your soul is dead, your spirit is dead, your body is alive, but you're dead. The real you is dead. Now, what needs to be done for a dead person? He needs to be made alive. And that's the work of the Holy Spirit, to make you alive. Jesus said you must be born again. And that word actually means to be made born from above. Born from above, born by the Spirit of God. You see, man without God is dead, and life is at best a bore. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Have you been born again? He also indwells, God says through Ezekiel. He dwelleth with you and shall be in you, Jesus said in this 14th chapter of John. Know ye not that you are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? The Holy Spirit comes to live within you. The Holy Spirit also baptizes. He baptizes us into the body of Christ. I believe the scriptures teach that we are, at least one time we're baptized. We're baptized when we receive Christ. We're baptized into the body of Christ. Have you been baptized into the body of Christ? That's not just joining a church. That's really coming to Christ as Lord, Master, and Savior and being baptized into His body. He also empowers us for service. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me. Power, supernatural power. And then He produces the fruit of the Spirit. When you receive Jesus Christ, you want to be a person of love and joy and peace and long-suffering and gentleness and goodness and faith and meekness and temperance, self-control. That's produced by the Holy Spirit. Those are attributes of Jesus Christ himself. Love, joy, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and self-control. He had it all. You can have it all. But it has to be done by the Holy Spirit through you. You cannot of yourself live the Christian life. You'll be a total flop and failure. It has to be the Holy Spirit living it through you and producing it in you. And he will do that. You see, if you take up Romans, the seventh chapter, that's a chapter of defeat. But then you pick up the next chapter, Romans 8, and you'll find the Holy Spirit is mentioned eight times and it's a chapter of victory. You can have victory in the Holy Spirit. We're told to walk in the Spirit. And then he magnifies and glorifies and exalts the Lord Jesus Christ. He shall not speak of himself. If you find a person coming along saying the Holy Spirit, 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 the Holy Spirit never talking about Jesus Christ, you can know that that man is not speaking from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit exalts Christ. He exalts the Lord Jesus Christ. He did not come to talk of himself. And then he fills us. The scripture says, be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. And that means to be continually filled with the Spirit. You have to be emptied of your selfishness and your own desires and your own gratifications so you can be filled with the Holy Spirit. And that's a command. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Are you filled with the Holy Spirit? You can be, by faith. You can say, all the, every known sin in my life has been forgiven. I've confessed every known sin. By faith, I believe I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. But also you can sin against the Holy Spirit. And the worst of all sins are the sins against the Holy Spirit. You can anger the Spirit. As I pick up the Bible, I do discover the wrath of the Spirit. The translation from the Septuagint, as we read in, the, in, in Psalm, how often they rebelled and grieved him in the desert. The translation is they disobeyed and made angry the Spirit of God. They rebelled and angered his Holy Spirit. Therefore, he turned to be their enemy and himself fought against them. Wouldn't it be terrible to have the Holy Spirit as your enemy? because you'd angered him. The word grieve means to make very angry. 
And I would urge every one of you to be very careful lest you rouse the wrath of the Spirit. My spirit shall not always strive with man, God said way back in Genesis 6 in the days of Noah. And the Spirit of God ceased striving and the flood came and the world was destroyed except for eight people. The Holy Spirit can be lied against. In Acts 5, Ananias and Sapphira, Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God, said Peter. They acted a lie. They pretended to be what they were not. They were hypocrites. And they acted out a lie. The Holy Spirit can be tempted. How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Many times sinners say, well, if God is God, let him strike me dead. You can tempt God. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. You can wait too long. You can tempt God too long. And the day of the time will come when it's no longer possible. And then the Holy Spirit can be resisted. Ye do always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did, so do ye. You can resist the Holy Spirit. And some of you tonight know that you need Christ, but you've been resisting the Holy Spirit. That's a sin against the Spirit. A solemn thing to resist the Holy Spirit. You detect His voice, and yet you deliberately do nothing about it. It's a dangerous thing.